She was so annoyed. She was so annoyed. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my worst books of 2023. I know it is now July 2023, but as I've been saying in the past two videos, um, your girl had depression, your girl didn't want to film in 2023, so your girl is back and we are filming this video. This is in no particular order, they are just books that I did not personally vibe with. If you love these books, I love that for you, but unfortunately they were not for me and they are books that I consider to be terrible. So that is just a me thing, doesn't have to be a you thing. So without further ado, let us get started. Okay, the first book that I'm going to be talking about is called Camp Spirit. This is a graphic novel by Axel Lenore. This takes place in the summer of 1994. It is following a girl named Elodie who is about to go off to college. Before she goes, her mother signs her up to be a camp counselor and she gets paired with a group of rambunctious redheads who plan on making her summer very memorable. And along the way, she discovers that this camp that she is attending is harboring some very dark secrets and it's kind of the story of that. So I hated this book. I truly, truly hated this book. I did really love the camp setting because I went to summer camp my entire life. I have worked at summer camp since I was 13, I think. 14. So like a big fan of the camp vibe overall. Also really loved the red-headed campers in this. They were so cute, super fun. What I did not love about this book was the homophobia that was thrown around so willy-nilly without ever being addressed. It almost felt like every other page was this one character being homophobic and I was just like... <laughs> for what? Roger? For what? I don't know if his name was Roger. I don't remember. I read this so long ago, but I remember really hating it. So don't recommend this book. Next up we got Just Breathe by Cammie McGovern. I gave this one, I want to say like a 2.5 out of 5 stars, which like is not terrible, but it's not good. It follows the popular senior class president named David. He has cystic fibrosis and he lands himself in the hospital after a flare-up and then there is a girl named Jamie who is a volunteer at this hospital. She is also battling depression and they strike up a little friendship. I do not like the love fixes all trope, especially when it's like a medical condition. Like, love is not going to fix that. I'm sorry, it's just not. And this book definitely headed towards that trope on multiple occasions, so I just was not a fan of it. I also just don't like cheating in books, and this had both emotional and physical cheating, so I could never really get behind the relationship, which made it very hard to root for these two characters because I was just like, y'all are cheating on your significant others. Like, why are we doing this? Just break up. Just break up. You know? It was giving the fault in our stars and five feet apart, but like, not good. You know? Next up, we have The Confusion of Laurel Graham by Adrian Kistner. This is a book about birds. There are just so many bird quotes, puns, facts. It just got old very quickly. It's not even about birds. That's like, it, it has undertones of birds, but it was so about birds when that wasn't supposed to be the main focus, but birds just birds. It follows 17-year-old Laurel Graham who wants to follow in the footsteps of her grandmother. She is a nature photographer. Her grandmother has an accident that lands her in the hospital and Laurel feels solely responsible for it. And then the mayor of the town that they live in shows up to her grandmother's house and starts saying that they want to build a school on that land. Grandma's in a coma so grandma can't do shit about it but Laurel and her friends decide that they are going to rally together to stop this from happening. While this is all going on, they're also trying to identify this mysterious bird that they have seen on the land. So, like I said, birds. There's also just like so many random swear words in this. And like if you've been on this channel, you know that I don't mind swearing. I swear a lot. But it was like every other sentence had the word fuck in it. And it was like, why? Like it just became jarring. And I just think everything wrapped up way too conveniently for this story, like it was just too easy and that just rubbed me the wrong way. Next up we got Broken Paradise by W.L. 
Knightley. This one follows Rowan, whose best friend Jessica disappeared 10 years ago. Then a mysterious young girl shows up outside the diner that Rowan works at, who has a strange resemblance to Jessica. So she's like, oh damn, Jessica's clearly still alive. We must find Jessica. So she decides to enlist the help of her ex-boyfriend Tyler, who is now a cop, and Jessica's ex-boyfriend Logan, who the town thinks killed her. And they're gonna find Jessica. This took me so long to read. I started it in April and I didn't finish it till June. I honestly hated every single one of these characters. They were all so one-dimensional. The only reason I continued reading this book was because I wanted to know what happened to Jessica. And do you know what's annoying? Do you know what's annoying? We don't even get to find out what happened to Jessica. We don't even know. It's never explained because there's a book too. So you have to read book two. Did I read book two? No. So I still don't know what happened to Jessica. Next up, we have His Holiday Pact by Isla Asher. This follows Kayla and her very, 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 very hot neighbor who decide to fake date to appease their parents. Um, but then as they spend more time together, they realize that they have chemistry. You know, your typical erotica novella. I will admit that these two characters, Kayla and Carter, did have very good chemistry together. But, but, this man strung her along so much, it got so repetitive, and I got so annoyed because Kayla, girl, Kayla, where is your self-worth? We do not let men do these things to us. We just don't, we don't. It just became exhausting the amount of times I had to read about Kayla putting herself down for her appearance and her weight. In the year of 2023, I don't think so, Kayla. I don't think so. Like, I don't know how many people had to tell her that she was hot, beautiful, sexy before she would believe it. I understand that it was because her mother is a shitty human being, but girl, literally everybody you came across was like, wow, you are so pretty, you are so beautiful, oh my god, those curves, girl, sex appeal. And she was like, no, I'm fat and ugly and I hate myself and blah, 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 blah. No. I also just really hated how the cover shows a very skinny girl. Like, Kayla is described as being voluptuous and curvy. Give me a curvy girl on a cover, okay? That's all I ask for. Next, we have Love and Other Great Expectations by Becky Dean. So this follows a girl who, after a knee injury that ends her sporting career, she takes off on a scavenger hunt that features British literature. So the hunt is across England. It is against three of her other classmates, and the grand prize is $100,000 that she hopes to use in her college tuition, since now she is never going to get a scholarship because of this knee injury. Along the way, she meets a boy, self-discovery, blah blah blah. I really thought that I was going to like this because I too received a injury in which I was unable to continue my sport. So I thought I was going to relate so much to Brit. I thought we were going to have like a kiki with our sadness about not being able to play our sport, but she was so annoying. She was so annoying. I found her so whiny. I also just think that um, Brit and Luke had absolutely no chemistry together, so it just, I didn't care. I did not care that they were spending all this time together. I did not care that they liked each other because no, they didn't, okay? They didn't. Next up, I have What Have We Done by Alex Finlay. This was so boring. I honestly do not know what it was about this. I just could not get into it. I did not give a shit. N zero fucks were given. I did want to know what this group of people were hiding, so I did keep reading. And then when I found out what it was that they were hiding, I was so disappointed. Like, why did I keep reading? It was so stupid. It basically follows these five residents of Save Your House. Multiple girls go missing, so this house is shut down, and then they are all reunited after the death of one of the five people, Ben. He dies, so they all come back together, and they're trying to figure out if the secret that they were hiding was revealed, and I just... It was stupid. I'm sorry. It was a stupid book. Next up, we have The Boyfriend Effect by Kendall Ryan. This is called Frisky Business Number One. So I thought we were going to get some frisky business. We did not get that much frisky business, which was disappointing. This follows a man named Hayes who is a serial dater. He just broke up with his most recent girl because she wanted something more serious and he was like, hell nah, I'm a player. The problem is, is that he has been in love with his best friend's little sister, Marin, for as long as he can remember. And so he decides to 
take a pause on the dating and put all of his attention on trying to save this retirement home that Marin works at. These two characters caused so much unnecessary drama in literally everybody's lives. For what? So that y'all could fuck once or twice? Like, just f do it. Just do it. Just tell the brother, hey, we like each other, we want to date, and that's the end of it. Like, it's so much drama. Like, you are both adults. You are both, like, 20-something years old. Just talk to the man. Like, honestly, I do think that they were cute together. They did have chemistry. I did enjoy the scenes in which they were together, but the saving grace of this book was Dawn, one of the retirement men in the home, and Hayes' grandmother. I want a book of those two because they were so darn cute and I loved the scenes with them together so I just I need them. If it weren't for them I would have given it a one star. I did give it a 2.5 solely for the old people. We love old people. Next up we have Folded Notes from High School by Matthew Broden. This is by Matt Boren and I despise this. This is probably the one that I hated the most out of all the books that I read. This takes place in 1991. It follows popular senior Tara Maureen Murphy who is dating super hot football player Christopher Caparelli. She's about to audition for Sandy in the musical Grease. She is a shoo-in for this role, but then Matthew Bloom, who is a freshman, how dare he, comes in and auditions for Danny Zuko, and he gets the role. And her whole world is turned upside down, and it's basically told all in letter format that they exchange in their lockers slash their mailboxes because they're also neighbors. It was a very cool concept. I will admit I was intrigued, but the execution of these characters was so bad. I fucking hated Tara Maureen Murphy, who had to say that her name was Tara Maureen Murphy literally every time she spoke. I understand that she was supposed to be the like trope of the mean girl and like nobody liked her and she sucked and I was just thinking that, you know, she was gonna go through an epiphany and become this nice girl. She didn't. She she remained evil for the entire story. And then her boyfriend, Christopher, was just disgusting and just a bad, bad man. He was terrible to women, so gross to women, and there was just no, like, talk about how terrible either of these characters were. So it's a no from me. I don't think that it was a good book, and I would not recommend it. And then the final book on my worst list of 2023 is Don't Say a Word by Amber Lynn Knott. So this is the second book in the hometown anti-hero duology? It, no, trilogy. It is a trilogy. I did not read the third book. I stopped at the second one. So this basically follows a girl named Kai who is trying to clear her father's name and then she is also trying to take down a prostitution ring at the ripe age of 17. She's also having this like weird fling thing with an FBI agent named Dawson who is 20 years old and he is posing as her ex-boyfriend at her high school but he wants to be more like he, he does want to date her for real and it's creepy at best it is it is a little weird I'm not gonna lie I am very bummed that there is a third book because I did want to know if the dad was innocent but I will not read it I, I'll never know if that man is guilty or not because I refuse to pick up the third book. Alright everybody, so those were my worst books of 2023. I will hopefully be recording my best books of 2023 soon and that will be a much more jolly, happy video because I know I rambled a little bit in this with my anger that kept reigniting. But let me know down below if you read any of these books and like I said, if you liked them, I love that for you. Please let me know what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!